Hey everybody, it's Scott Goyette and I will be having Jeff Ryder show up shortly. Um, it's been a crazy week for him and we also have some issues that are going on right now in Austin, Texas. We're not the best drivers if there's any rain as a collective and uh, if the rain becomes freezing rain and there's any snow at all, it gets a little crazy for people. So what's going on right now is Jeff actually was going to an acupuncture appointment and he's making sure he's driving safely on the way back and it ran a lot late. So uh, he's doing all the things that we're gonna talk about today, taking care of himself and making sure that he's doing the right things to take care of his body so that he can handle the chemo and radiation treatment and all of that. So um, right now, if there's anybody here and you guys have some questions that you wanna throw up for Jeff, he's gonna be here shortly. I'll give you a little bit of background about him again um, once again, he actually had cancer a while back and he was able to work through it. Um, he since has found out that he was re-diagnosed and he's got cancer again, it's lymphoma. I don't have all the details for you, but um, when he steps in, he's gonna share all that with us. So um, he should be in here pretty shortly. And when he gets here, we can connect and we can talk about everything that we've got to share with you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them up here. Um, we'd love to answer them. But I mean, I know that everybody out there, we have people in our lives that have cancer, have had cancer, and it's definitely a very real thing for all of us. Uh, me personally, my father, he actually found out in a routine um, colonoscopy that he had cancer a few years back. And literally the only reason he found out was they were doing the colonoscopy and this kind of sounds horrible, but I think they went in too far and they were into a point in his uh, small intestine and they found some um, cancer in there. So what he had to do rather than radiation and chemo was he had a surgery to remove that part of his small intestine. And then he had a horrible reaction to that. And so after all of that, he had to go back in for a secondary surgery to repair that. And now he's on this $8,000 a shot cocktail called octreotide. If you guys are familiar, anybody who's got somebody who's suffering from cancer. But, um, it, and it's crazy when you think about it, what if somebody didn't have insurance? Hey, how are you, Dar Darlene? It's good to see you. Um, but what if we didn't even have insurance and you've got to pay that $8,000? And I think you might get it every month or every few months, but uh, that's insane. I mean, it's amazing to think of what people are actually paying to you know fight and combat this disease. It's, uh, it's crazy. My father-in-law also years back, he got uh, cancer in his lung and he had to remove the lower part, lower lobe of one of his lungs. And that's a long story in his, you know, itself, how he found out about that, but he was fine. He was free and clear. And only months ago, six months ago, less than a year ago, I mean, with COVID, it's so hard to even um, understand time anymore. I feel like everything's morphed into this quarantine but he found out that he had a cancerous growth again in his lung. And so he's been battling that as well. And uh, he's just gonna talk a little bit about some of the stuff with that as well, but he's been battling cancer as well. And he's done chemo radiation. He's also been on the immunotherapy and he's had some struggles with that. Um, when Jeff and I talk, we're gonna you know speak about exactly what, what's going on there. Um, since then, now they have them on another thing. They have them on prednisone, of course, which is a steroid and anti-inflammatory. That's working for him. But there's so many things that we're just bombarding the, bo the body with. And what I want to share you know, with Jeff today and talk about with Jeff is what are the things that we can do outside of the, um, the traditional, you know, I'm sorry, the uh, Western medicine? What are the things that we can do for mindset? What are the things that we can do to take care of the body because one of the craziest things if you think about is no one's sitting here preparing for cancer. You know, we're going through our day-to-day -day life. Like right now I went to the gym, I did my work, I sent out some contracts, you know, had a few coaching calls, you're doing your stuff. And then one day somebody's like, you got cancer, a family member has cancer. And then everyone's thrown in their opinion. You gotta eat healthy, you gotta sleep right. You should do chemo, you shouldn't do chemo, you should do radiation, you shouldn't do it. And that just must be the most insane thing to deal with in your mind. It's like, first I have cancer, now everyone wants to tell me how to manage it. And so I think these conversations are really good um, to have so that in case that happens in your family or to you, 
not that you're going to sit here and have this big preparation of what would I do, but at least have a mindset that, hey, this is the mindset I want. Maybe you're already doing some of the things that would help you anyway, as far as health eating. Like, why am I not eating healthy right now? What does healthy actually mean? What is it that I really need to be doing so maybe I wouldn't get cancer in the first place? And so, you know, we can sit here and go back and forth on this all day. Um, again, Jeff should be here any second. I'm just double checking on my phone because he said he's, um, again, I'm trying to make sure he doesn't drive 800 miles an hour because if you've ever driven in the south when there's any, uh, never mind snow, you know, I'm from New England. So, you know, we've got two feet of snow and people go out, they're like, I got to go get a roast beef sandwich. Here you've got rain and it just slightly freezes and there's an 80 car pile up. So um, he will be on here in a moment. He was just coming back again from the acupuncturist. Um, and that was that was his his day. So he's trying to do all the proactive things that at this moment are still reactive to the cancer, but making sure that he can handle the radiation and the um, uh, the chemotherapy. Um, and I'm not sure if he's going to be doing the immunotherapy. We'll talk about that with, with him, too. Hey, guys. So Manny um, came in, too. He was just saying he's proud of Jeff. And, yep, 100%. I mean, Jeff's an amazing guy. And uh, if you know him, he's one of these just bundles of positive energy. So if anybody can manage this, it's him. And it's beautiful to see, you know, when people fight and try to, you know, figure out how am I going to get through this. And I think it's important that we all figure out those formulas of what we're doing again proactively and then reactively once we actually um, find out that uh, we do have cancer if somebody does so let me um, real quick I know we're live but I'm gonna just double check and make sure that he's able to I'm just gonna see if he's even having trouble getting on here or whatever just so he's got let me just see real quick And if for some reason he can't get on, then we'll have to reschedule. We'll try again. But again, he's doing his best. I mean, one of the things that's he's not answering. So um, again, one of the things is oh, there he is. So, hey Jeff, we're live. Are you coming on, or should I should I end it? Okay. All right. I'll see you in one second. All righty. Here he comes. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure that he's feeling all right, too, because, you know, one of the things with struggling through this is he's trying to make sure that he's capable of even doing stuff like this. Uh, his goal is to use this again as something that even though it seems like such a negative, how can I use this to help other people? And I think that's one of the most beautiful things with any kind of trauma that we face is, you know, reframing that and saying, hey, how can I take this that is really difficult and horrible for me at this time? but figure out a way for me to teach others with this. So here he comes. All right. Hi, Jeff. How are you, brother? Yeah, let me um, get these up. How are you doing? Hey, Scott. How are you doing, man? I'm <laughs> apologize for showing up late. No, 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 no. We, we, we've, been, we've been chatting, too. I was telling him about um, ice storms in Austin, too, and what happens when you have an ice storm. and uh, Everything even shuts down. Oh, Oh yeah, yeah. Somebody sneezes and there's six car pileup. So right. we got to deal with all that. Add that in, and uh, Eastern medicine, which takes their time, which is fine with me, but obviously it didn't bode well for this. <laughs> there you go. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, you look at uh, you know Buddhism and all these you know Eastern mindsets. The beauty behind it is is time really isn't an issue. And no, well, we're, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're living in a Western world where everybody's scheduling things on time. So <laughs> exactly. I know when I walked around Thailand, everyone's just like, hey, what are you doing? What are we doing? Unless you're in Bangkok, that's a little crazy. But when you're down there, the beach is everything's, there's no time. So. Yeah, there isn't. Super just, cool. Just manana. So tell us, how was the, how was the acupuncture today? Uh, it was good, man. I uh, A friend of mine referred me to Dr. Ha. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I pronounce it. Uh, that's And that's about as far as I'm going to go with the, uh, <laughs> With him but he he says call me dr ha so uh he was highly recommended by a friend of mine who does cranial sacral uh meditation yeah. and uh dr ha apparently is like where all the acupuncturists in austin go to be taught 
they get taught by him. So this is the second time I've gone to him. Um, uh, and, you know, he very familiar with chemo, with this particular type of chemo. Um, and he, you know, recommended a variety of things. I mean, he already knew that, you know, your voice is raspy, Jeff. That's from chemo. Um, your energy is low. That's from chemo. Um, one of the things that this chemo attacks when you're in chemo and then afterwards is neuropathy. So he was giving me a, a bunch of, uh, um, neuropathy, uh, points on my, on my feet and everything. Um, and it's just, it's really relaxing. I'm there for about an hour, a little longer, obviously. Um, and then he makes up, uh, he makes up some herbal tea for me. Nice. So I do <laughs> three scoops, uh, twice a day of this. Um, and I'm just following him to a T, uh, go and see him next, next Friday, uh, two days after my next chemo treatment. Cool. So, you know, I was just, um, sharing with everybody before you jumped in, um, I was talking about, you know, my dad had had, um, cancer in a small intestine and never actually had to go through the chemo with radiation. He, um, actually has this cocktail called octreotide and he had part of his small intestine removed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then of course, you know, Max, my father-in-law. So he had, you know, cancer in part of his lung, got part of his lung removed. You know, he was free and clear. Then, of course, he had that um, that spot that showed up again that was cancerous. And so he's gone through the radiation and the chemo. And I was just explaining to everybody that the whole world wants to tell him what he needs to do. You've got to go natural. You've got to go not natural. You've got to attack it with chemo. You should never do chemo. You've got to do radiation. Tell your doctor, don't do the immunotherapy. Tell your doctor, do the immunotherapy. And I can only imagine from sitting where I'm sitting what he must feel like. Let's talk about what that feels like to the individual, to you, because this is your second round. And let's talk about both rounds, your first round versus this round and what's going on in your, in your mind. Yeah. So the first round was seven years ago. Um, I was diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So uh, very slow growth uh, type leukemia where they, uh, I went in for a regular checkup and they uh, were checking my white blood cell counts and my white blood cell counts were through the roof. They were in uh, normal ranges or four to 6,000. Mine were in the 60,000 range, but I never had a symptom. So they do what's called a watch and wait. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and they, they just watched, I just watched it roller coaster from 60 to 80 back to 60. And then it kept inching up. And then that was a, a year went by and I said, so at what point do you all start treatment if I don't have a symptom and, uh, and my white blood cell counts just keep going up. And they said, well, the next time it hits over a hundred, two months in a row. And that's exactly what happened the next two times. Um, so they started a, uh, a, a chemo treatment, uh, that was eight months every three days. I'm sorry, three days in a row, every 30 days. Um, I like Max and, 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 and a lot of other people are, you know, I get a lot of advice and, and, and when that, when, when that happened with CLL, um, I, I did, I was uh, dove into documentaries and, and became a voracious reader uh, in terms of, of uh, holistic type medicines uh, for chemo because chemo or the cancer treatment industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. And uh, you know, the, it, modern medicine wasn't around years ago. Uh, there was, uh, and I remember Max and I talking about this with you. Uh, there was a, a, a study done on the, the Gerwin Institute, um, Max Gerwin of all people. And he was a, uh, uh, he was in Nazi America, Nazi Germany. And he um, was treating patients with just organic based food diets and uh, coffee enemas of all things. And uh, he was his he was he was curing people of of disease because of that. Um, when Nazi Germany took over Norway, they uh, uh, they took all the cattle and they took all the all the the, the, the barn animals, so to speak, I guess. And they uh, and they put the Norwegians on a plant based food diet and their disease rate went down where Nazi Germany's went up because they were eating all these uh, animal fats. So anyway, I started reading about all that. And so I really took a holistic approach um, 
not that I did not not do chemo because I did. I also wanted to take this holistic approach of, of uh, then, um, I mean, I was working out multiple times a day. I was eating extremely well. <clears throat> so I don't know if that had anything to do with it, honestly. Um, I just know that um, how it made me feel through that whole treatment. I never had a symptom from CLL and I never had a symptom from the chemo, which was, I mean, I'd even go to my oncologist and, and tell her, uh, you know, I better have something here. I mean, you guys are, you guys are hooking me up to all kinds of poisons and medicines and, and I don't have a symptom yet. So, you know, the interesting thing, yeah. like, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you loud and clear and you and I've talked about this. One of the things that, you know, it, it kind of comes to mind for me is, you know, some people, of course, are going to go research, you know, the Gerwin Institute right now, and they're going to read all the people discrediting, saying you're a quack, and then you're going to see the people that had the great benefits from it, like anything. And so what if we pose this? Every single being is different. And so maybe in Norway or maybe in a certain place, that plant-based diet based on your genetics is exactly what you need. And I think that's something that we forget to do is we all follow the masses. We all run around and say, I have to do chemo. I have to do this. I have to do this. It's your own journey. And so as you're figuring out what you feel called to do and recognizing how your body responds to your point, you're like, I didn't even get affected by chemo. Well, that's not everybody. And that might not be this time. And so let's talk about that. Like, how can we, you're sitting in a moment, someone says to you, you have cancer. And all of a sudden everyone's throwing you, you've got your, you know, your friends who are like, all natural is the only way to go. And then you've got the the only way to do it is Western merits. You know, this is science. What's the integration of the two of that? That's two of those things. And, and what can we talk to people about? What can they do? Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, Scott. I think that, um, I mean, we all know that eating healthy is, is a big deal. Uh, spending time in the middle aisles of, of, of HEB processed food is not good for us. We have a colon that's about a mile long. We're not, our body is not made to eat meat. It really isn't. Now I'm a meat lover, so I, I do, but you know, getting protein from plant-based food diet uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Although I, I don't, I still crave my burgers and I still want to have my steak and I do. Um, but I, but I do eat healthier uh, ever since the first bout of, uh, of CLL. Um, when I went, seven years ago and this time and talked to the nutritionist at, doc, at Texas Oncology, they're not really helpful. Um, I, I'm asking them questions about nutrition and what are the best things to eat and are there superfoods and should I be eating plant-based food diet? And, and they basically just say, you know, just eat three squares a day, Jeff, you know, eat, eat, eat healthy. That's it. That, that, that's all they give. Um, so I, I think everyone's journey is different, certainly. Um, uh, I wasn't not going to not do chemo that last time or this time. Uh, this, this cancer is, is a little bit different from my last one. Um, I can't even believe I'm even saying that, but uh, uh, it is. Uh, so this one, I'm going to try to hit head on as well. I want to eat healthy. Um, I, 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 my energy is way down. You're kind of uh, and burr. Dr. Ha actually, we still got, you still got me? Uh, Am I breaking up? Scott, you there? You there? Of us are popping in and out, which means we have Austin internet issues because of all the ice storm, this ice storm. How's yeah. that? I'm here. There you go. You're you back. There? Yeah, you said you said you can't even believe you're you're sharing that. You're at that point, and <laughs> oh, then I, I think our I, internet. Yeah, I can't believe that I actually am saying that I had this is the second time I've had cancer. I just can't. That's sort of weird for me to fathom in my head. Um, but I think that uh, like last time, this time I want to lean into it. I want to stay positive. Um, I want to eat well. Um, I, I, I've had a loss of energy, tremendous loss of energy, which is very odd for me since I'm sort of pretty high strung to begin with and have a high energy level. Um, but with the acupuncture today, Dr. Ha gave me, uh, you know, he, I told him that and he's, so he made up the herbal tea to help with my energy and he put some, put some needles in certain areas that hopefully that'll help. We'll see. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the chemo itself, 
I've only had one bout of it, one one treatment of it. Um, and usually after the treatment for about four or five days is when you feel the real effects of it. Um, so that was last Wednesday for me. So I should be sort of out of those effects of that chemo, um, which are constipation, uh, lack of energy. Uh, you got to keep your mouth very clean. No, not, no use of alcohol in your mouth. So I use like biotin, very, very, uh, um, easy going on, on the mouth, uh, to, to create saliva because your, your, your mouth dries up quite a bit. Um, and that's, th th those are really the main symptoms. Um, when I had this thing, how it all started was I got a, there was a growth on my neck, uh, that's still there. It's very minor before it blew up, uh, about a month ago. And so they go in, they zap that, they break that up. Um, by breaking it up, uh, it releases a bunch of uric acid in my body, um, which potentially can cause tumor lysis syndrome, which basically this chemo and those uric acid is attacking my lungs, my, my, um, my pulmonary, um, my heart and my, um, and my pulmonary heart and kidneys. So, uh, you know, I, knowing that I, I just try to make sure I'm eating, you know, the right foods that, that are not going to be hard on those. Uh, certainly, um, I don't know what your audience is all about here, but I, I don't care that, uh, um, uh, I, Texas oncology, they will not, you will not see this in a pamphlet anywhere, but they are fans of THC. Um, I have been a fan of THC for years. Um, unfortunately, I cannot smoke it. I have to do edibles, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's a minor adjustment really in a first world problem, really. Um, but uh, so the, I've been, you know, I take anti-nausea medicine. Um, I take a, a, a pill every day for my kidney um, and um and to make sure that I'm eating, don't, don't have a loss of appetite. And I've been doing really good in all those areas. Um, I think a couple, couple days ago, I over gummied, but, uh, you know, <laughs> someone's got to find her groove. So we'll be all right. Christopher Rush really liked that. As soon as you said that, I, I, I could visualize his face laughing, going, I get you. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you said it and instantaneously an LOL came out. Like there was actually no downtime, which is amazing, which means, he was laughing while he was writing it, while he was saying it, while he was laughing. So, so you're connecting with people. That's good. good. <laughs> um, it's been, uh, uh, you know, this whole thing is a journey. I mean, I got supposedly six months of this. So that means two treatments a month. Um, so for two and a half hours, they just hit me hard. Um, and... I know that this is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, you know, they like last time when I had the CLL and the chemo, I never had a symptom of the chemo. I no no hair loss, nothing. Um, this time, they're like, "Hey, Jeff, you know, expect it." And I'm like, "Is, is there a, like a small chance, one percent chance, uh, maybe a point one percent chance?" And I'm like, "So you're telling me there's a chance? Good." <laughs> um, but I, I expect that that's going to happen. I expect to lose my hair. I expect to uh, to, uh, to to uh, lose some weight. I expect uh, that you know th this thing's going to hammer me. Um, so the more I can do now to keep my spirits up, to keep physically fit, um, th th I think the better I'll be in the later rounds, so to speak. And, and to that point, too, you know, it was it was interesting. And I'll just tell everybody this. I had called you because I know that you had cancer in the past. And to talk to you about saying hello to, you know, Max, my father-in-law, when he found out to talk about your experience with chemo. And it's interesting because you saw him with a full head of hair. He since lost his hair. And now it's coming back like on fire. And it just so for me and, and you know, think of how this COVID has been so weird, like. It's been since last March and all these things have happened. We've lost jobs, made jobs, done this, done that. And literally in that time period, he's he's had hair, lost hair, got hair. You, you've got cancer now. 
like if really if you really want to look at it it's all going to happen in a blink but it's those yeah. moments that as we're sitting in the moment it's it's a lot it's like well what am i going to do today how am i going to feel with this what if i lose some hair what if i have a bad reaction what if i don't take the gummy what if i do take the gummy what if i mean we can sit here all day long and so let's talk about that like what can we tell people to help them handle the moments you know even talking to yourself yeah. included yeah, that's a really good point because at the end of the day, this is just a blip on the radar. Um, when you look at your whole life or, you know, a 10 year, a decade period, um, four months is nothing. Um, you know, uh, each day is different. Um, I think that getting into a regiment of doing the same thing every day is a big, big help. Um, I remember last time, you know, I, I was eating, I mean, I was in the best shape of, of my, well, not my life, but, but pretty damn close in my fifties, I was in really, really good shape. So this time, um, like last time I can see myself getting into a regimen of, okay, Jeff, you know, every day, let's make sure you do your, your herbal tea. Let's make sure that you're going to moisturize or, you know, or uh, do try to do some push ups or, just try to stay in that regimen every single day um, and, and stay in positive because there are going to be some tough days. There are going to be some dark days that I'm sure I'm going to have. Um, I'm pretty resilient. I'm pretty, uh, um, I, I, I keep a pretty positive, upbeat attitude. I can't tell you how important it is to have, to have this with you, Scott. Um, and I really appreciate even the opportunity to share this. I never thought I was going to, you know, share something like this live. Uh, a friend of mine told me to do a video, uh, a video uh, uh, journal. And I don't know, I was trying to do that and it was tough and, I'm, and I don't really like to write either. So this is actually, I think is going to be really helpful for me. Um, but I will tell you that, that having, my sister lives in Saudi Arabia, my brother lives in DC. We have a small knit family, that's pretty much it. My daughter is in, in uh, San Antonio. <clears throat> and then I have a, you know, like we all do, probably, hopefully we all have at least uh, our closest friends we count on one hand. So I have those. I have those to, to as a support group. I think that's extremely important. Um, I love to laugh. I have some friends that, uh, that, that, that we love to laugh. And I, I think that's almost like the best therapy there is. I like that. I like that. There's, there's something amazing when people just start laughing that it, it's, <laughs> it's contagious. I mean, it's, I'll, I'll share a story with you that's uh, that's pretty silly, but it will resonate with you. And you'll actually probably laugh at the story. Uh, when we were 16 years old, we got fake IDs and there was this one bar that could care less. And, you know, you go in there. And so my friends are like, how, we, how do we talk to girls? I go, let's just start laughing and they'll come to us. And they were laughing at me going, that's not going to work. And I'm just laughing. I'm punching them in the arm and they're laughing. I just kept laughing and kept laughing, but nothing. Just was laughing and laughing and laughing. Sure enough, two girls who we had no right talking to come over and talk to us. And to this day, they're all like, let's just start laughing. I'm like, just start laughing. That's great. And they probably said, what's so funny? You guys are exactly. so Exactly. And then we're just like, you wouldn't even under, like, you know, you should see what he did. You start saying anything and suddenly everyone's laughing. It's almost like that's laughter is a beautiful drug that we can create starting in this moment. And that's a, I love that. I, I think laughing is huge. That's funny. And you mentioned the fake ID. Is that the one that looked like a library card, but it got you in places? So you, you will appreciate how I actually created my ID because this is, you know, like the boyish, you know, you and I are probably a similar character. I went into a bar and they actually had the bar manual, you know, that, that show, you show the IDs from different states at, at the door. And I said, I'm doing a, um, a report on licenses from all the different countries. So I borrowed it. They let me borrow it. I literally went into a bar and asked to borrow it. They gave it to me and said, bring it back. I go, I just want to look up a few and photocopy them at the library. I cut out New Jersey, so they don't even know the page is gone. I give it back to them. And I literally made it from that as the framework. I took my picture that it was said, um, it said John Q. Public. I changed it to Juan Q. Publio. My name was Juan Q. Publio. And so my friends would go, they'd go like, hey, pubes, hey, pubes. And people would be like. <laughs> See, I was much more honorable. I, I actually gave my full name. <laughs> I was Juan Publio, the pubes. It's a great name. You know, if you're going to go into a bar, like be called pubes. People are going to ask why. <laughs> and laugh all the time. And then laugh all the time. Why is his name pubes? 
Because my name's Juan Publio. Publio. I can't even say it. It's so stupid. That's so funny. Yeah. So here's here's one other thing. So I, I love where we're going with this. So one of the things I'm hearing is how do we address the moments? How do we incorporate laughter? Um, whether you know whether we do it with gummies, whether we do it with silly people around us, whether we do it on Netflix binges, whether we take that dog behind you and roll around with them and play with them because dogs are the best things in the face of the earth. That's one piece. The other piece is this is your journey, but depending on the person, like we said before, everyone wants to come in and make a comment. What's What can we tell the family once they find out or the friends? Because everyone has the perfect solution of, Jeff, you know what you need to do. And and I feel like that can be massively overwhelming. What can we give advice yeah, when no, we that's find? That's a really, really good point because like last time, um, you know, when I first was diagnosed, uh, you know, there were certain people that I called right away. Um, obviously the call to my daughter is, is, was, is, was, was, it was a difficult one. Um, you know, I, I learned that, you know, do, do you want to keep it private? Do you want to keep it open? And, and I, I, you know, last time I kept it a little bit more private for no reason. It, I just didn't want to be that guy, you know? Um, and then on this one, I think it was, I don't know. I just have a different mindset going into it and obviously connecting with you. It, it made sense to sort of share this with people and I, and I don't have any problem with doing it, even though it's going to be a little more of a challenging one. Um, so all those things you mentioned, including this guy right here, toast, my daughter, uh, my daughter gave him to me on permanent loan. She said, daddy, <laughs> it's his time to shine. So I got toast for the next four months, which is awesome. Um, I think it's those things that you said, certainly, you know, whether it's gummies or certainly therapy with, Silly friends is 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 huge. Um, I think it's getting through the dark times. I think it's the times that you don't want to laugh or that you don't, you know, that you're hurting. I think those are the times that you sort of just lean into them and know that that too will pass. So if you're feeling like shit, know that hey, if I fall asleep when I wake up, I'm probably not going to feel like shit anymore. So it's just sort of going through the darkness to get to the light, if you will, right? You got to get to it. You got to go through it to get to it. I agree. Um, we had a few people say hello to you. So Melanie Bruns, I don't know if you can uh, see it. Yeah. Can you see Melanie? No, I, uh, and, and Manny, Manny's up there, hey, your buddy Manny. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, my, they're my paisons. And Tara Hayes, you know Tara from yeah, Rotary and from Well yeah, Aware. Yeah, that's great, awesome, hey guys. Yeah. All good people, and they're all here supporting you. <laughs> they are, they are, Manny and Melanie. Melanie's a huge one for the for the laughter. She just she and I laugh all the time. It's just great. She um, told you to not forget moisturizing. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, I won't. Um, all three of them, by the way, <clears throat> and you know you know Sarah Evans, right, Scott? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, Tara and Sarah. So, yeah, yeah, they uh, were the so Manny, Melanie, and myself and Tara were all involved in Well Aware. Um, yeah. Matter of fact, uh, Wellaware sent me a really nice uh, little gift today, just this little blankie, which I thought was really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, all three of them are solid folks. Tara's been with uh, with Wellaware for, God, over 10 years. Manny and I went to Africa together in 16. And then uh, Melanie went with her son in 17 as uh, Rafiki's. Rafiki's is uh, Swahili for friend. Nice. That's interesting, actually. I have a friend, uh, his name's Haider Rafiki. I don't even know if that's the same, like if that's where the name comes from, but that's pretty cool. Haider friend. I like it. I like it. So, I mean, you've, you've given us a ton of good information. Um, one of the things that I wonder if people would be interested in doing too is following you on your journey. Um, maybe we can make this, you know, pop in and do a few of these, like you said, instead of doing the video journey journal, you know, pick and choose. We can pop in and people could come back in and join us and we can chat see you know what kind of things are working one of the things that you brought up that i think is super important and i'm glad you said it is the the positive people drive a lot of the people nuts you know the people always like be positive be positive it's like dude i have fucking cancer like you know like it like you stop telling me to be positive like there's some reality to it like here's the thing i think positivity can be a byproduct of attacking those emotions so if you, if you feel sad go cry yeah. like you know it's a good point. And so so I love that you start you started to tap into that. You feel angry, 
I mean, I don't know if I'd say punch a wall, punch something that's not going to break your hand, yeah. get, get, get upset, feel it. But because like you said, I mean, these moments are going to pass. I, I, I think that, so this is something that, and we can do this a whole nother show and talk about this, but I would really love to ask people, you know, their experience with this too, but diving in what part of cancer itself, and this is like an honest big question, could be because we've never expressed our emotions anyway. Energetically, you know, you hear people talk about that. So in other words, like I have a lot of anger that lives in me and I, I mask it by laughing and I'm a joker and whatever. And then when I really get mad, it surfaces just like thunder because of things that I suppress. And I said, that's okay, you gotta be a man, don't get upset about it, don't. And so I hit all that. And some people hide sad sadness, some shame, some all of it, some fear. And we're seeing that in the world right now. So I think this is an amazing opportunity to share with others to just take those emotions when you feel them coming up, stop pushing them back down and compartmentalizing them and go into them, lean into them. Because yeah. what's gonna be on the other side is gonna be much more beautiful. Yeah, I think that's a really, really good point. Um, you know, a friend of mine years ago told me, you know, if you're gonna cry, wallow in it, go cry, wallow in it. 100%. Get it out. Um, and you're right, I think sometimes, you know, people are all trying to do their best and give positive uh, positivity and be, be a positive influence. But sometimes it just comes at the wrong time and you don't want that. You're like, God, stop, stop telling me that. And I will be, but if you keep telling me that you're pissing me off. Yeah. So um, I think that it's, uh, you know, everyone's coming from a good place. I can't tell you how many people have, have reached out and, you know, that, that how they can help and, 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 you know, to stay positive and do all those things. And I just sort of take it in stride because I know that they're, it's coming from a good place. Um, but there are times that I don't want to, I think that cancer, um, like, like, uh, topics like racism, um, are awkward. And I 100%. think, and I think that's why we should talk about them. hundred percent. 100%. I'm so with you. Because even like, as I was asking that question, I was like, I was asking you, I was like, hey, wait a second, you know, you actually have cancer. So as I'm saying it, it's something that I've thought before. I'm like, should I ask this question? But my, my point with the question was, could cancer be something that ends up growing because of all the stored up emotions? And so, you know, I'm kind of in my in my brain, I'm like, do I ask you because you have it? Should I have said that? You know, because it is awkward, but that's exactly why we should be talking about it. Well, and that's a good point. Like, you know, I, I have thought in my head, like, you know, why do I have it again? Is this something that I'm doing? Is it I'm is it because I'm I hold my emotions in? Is it because I uh, had a kidney stone in June? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea yeah. why yeah. I get it and why somebody else doesn't. I eat pretty healthy. Uh, the CLL was a weird one because the average age of somebody getting CLL is significantly older than I was when I was diagnosed with it. So that's a little scary. Um, and uh, uh, matter of fact, Manny on his phone on the, on the call right now, his mother has CLL. Uh, I have another friend here in town that her mother had CLL. Um, but, and they're both, you know, 10, 15 years older than I am. Um, so you know, that's in partial remission, I guess, or whatever. And then, I've, you know, suddenly I get, I get lymphoma and I'm like, what the fuck? What is, why? Um, and I, you know, I, I'm not going to answer that question certainly. So I just, you know, try to just stay positive and um, let's, let's hope that there's not a trifecta here. Well, here's an answer that maybe we could all lean into is maybe it's a bunch of things, you know, like, like, like you said, the Gerwin Institute isn't going to be the be all end all for everybody. But does it hurt to eat organic? Hey, listen, if you're in a butt coffee, go right ahead and do it. You know, if you need some coffee enemas, you know, do do what you do. Um, but but at the end of the day, honestly, it like this is my, my brain is it if, if this happened to me in this moment, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna go to acupuncture. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat healthy. I'm gonna make sure I get some sleep. I'm still gonna go to the gym. I'm still probably gonna trust some Western medicine because I believe in science. And I'm going to take a lot of things in and I'm going to really do my best to do what I just told you. I'm going to work through my emotions to completion. So if I'm a sad, I'm going to go into a room and cry and just maybe if anger comes, I'm going to just get it out because, you know, those are things that I've studied. And I think those things eat us up and can metastasize into something. Mm -hmm. And whether it's cancer, whether it's whatever, I don't know. 
I, you know, I'm not, I don't know, but I'm going to try it. Well, I, I, and you know, even with Texas oncology, everything that I've asked them that I've wanted to do on my own, I've, I've asked them, you know, is it going to hurt? That's because, a good question. Because they'll tell you sometimes, oh, that's really not going to help. Okay. But is it going to hurt? And to that point, then if it's not, then I'm doing it. That's that's so that's the question we should put on here. We should call that this show like we should like keep meeting back. And is, is it going to hurt? Because that's the thing we need to add is if we start doing things that are variables that aren't hurting, one of those is going to stick to you and help you. And maybe the next person doesn't whatever. But if you do, you know, I'm eating healthy. I'm going to acupuncture. I'm crying to completion. I'm, you know, eating some gummies, you know, whatever, like throw those things together. And if they're not going to hurt, make your own Jeffrey cocktail to support your moments. So, yeah. I mean, I look at this also is that, you know, I've, I've smoked cigarettes on and off for years. So now I'm not, um, I'm not going to smoke uh, weed anymore. I'm only going to do edibles. Uh, I'm not going to drink alcohol through this whole thing. So there's three positives right there. Yeah. There's a reboot. You got a couple other people saying hi to you too here. We got Timothy Healy. We've uh, got geez. my mom my mom, because my um my dad too. He like I said, he had cancer, and uh, he's getting his uh, triatide shots. She's here saying hello. Um, Christopher Roush again is here. Lynn Serrano, who she's a super beautiful human being, has her own talk show as well, and uh, she's amazing. And there's my dad too. So he's here too, saying hello. So you get a good group. Awesome. Everyone's saying hi. <laughs> So why don't we do this, Jeff? You got any last parting words that you want to share? And I think let's try to regroup, see what's working, you know, what what could be working better. And we can um, set up another one of these at your convenience and reconnect with the, the universe. You know, I'm going to I'm going to my sister sent me a card. Um, it's I'm going to read that if that's OK. Of course. Um, and it's a quote uh, by Christian D. Larson. I don't know who he is, but I'm sure he's someone super smart. Um, but I thought this was relative. I read it this morning. I think I'm going to see if I can read this on, on the, the live chat that we have. Promise yourself to be strong, that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. Look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come true. Think only of the best, work only for the best, and expect only the best. Forget the mistakes of the past and press on to the greater achievements of the future. Give so much time to the improvement of yourself that you have no time to criticize others. Live in faith that the whole world is on your side as long as you are true to the best that is in you. I, that was I, I love it. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm done. Oh, thank you, Scott. <laughs> so you and I will regroup. Look forward to doing it again. Thanks for everyone that, uh, that showed up that I know. And uh, peace. Peace. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Take care.